Hello and welcome to the podcast with myself, Leanne Juliet. For those who are returning listeners, I've been missing in action for quite a few months. Um, I've been down a deep, 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 deep rabbit hole of rebirth. And that's what I wanted to talk about today was um, rebirth, spiritual awakenings, dark nights of the soul, um, everything around stripping ourselves back to the core identity of who we actually are. Um, rebirth is one of my gifts. It's one of my um, powerful spiritual gifts that I share with my clients. It's that ability to continually rebirth myself again and again and again and regenerate myself and strip myself back and go deeper and deeper and deeper into myself in order to reclaim forgotten aspects of myself, um, reclaim my power, um, remember parts of myself that have been forgotten. And that is the whole process of rebirth, is to essentially strip ourselves back from a layer of our identity, a layer of self that does not serve our highest good anymore, like an onion that you're constantly peeling an onion and peeling and peeling and peeling to reveal a new layer and each layer is fresh underneath you know when the old layer goes a bit weird and brown and maybe a bit stinky or something and then the new layer underneath is fresh and wholesome and pure that's the whole point of rebirth and that is one of my very powerful spiritual gifts is rebirth, ability to regenerate myself. I'm um, in astrology, I'm a Scorpio rising in sidereal astrology, hence the Scorpio with the ability to regenerate and transform over again. And when you're not used to rebirth, or maybe you've experienced it for the first time and you're not used to it, it can be quite a scary experience, quite a daunting experience, like to go through a spiritual awakening, um, to maybe even go through a dark night of the soul. Um, that's a fucking experience in itself. But it can be quite daunting to go through a rebirth. Um, but obviously a seasoned pro over here, it's something that I do continually. I put myself through a rebirth in order to access a deeper layer within myself and I do it often like obviously this has been like quite a few months now for myself I'm just starting to come out of that rebirth now so I wanted to get back to my podcast get back to writing and speaking because that's all my soul wants to do is write and speak write and speak I went through a, a very powerful dark night of the soul about three three or four years ago and all I heard was, all I want to do is write and speak. All I want to do is write and speak. I love to write. I love to speak. So I'm back to that again. And I wanted to start like kind of this, this new journey of mine, talking about rebirth, because I know that it can be scary and it can be daunting and it can be quite overwhelming if you're not used to the process of rebirth, if you're not familiar with it, if you're not used to it, if it's your first rebirth, if you're, um, if you've been stuck in a rebirth for a while and can't seem to find the way out, it can be quite a daunting experience. And the thing with spiritual awakenings, because that's what a rebirth is essentially, is a spiritual awakening. Because when you go through a spiritual awakening you don't just go through one awakening, it's a, it's a series of awakening. Once you awaken, you then awaken to a deeper layer and a deeper layer and a deeper layer. And it is a, it is a journey. The awakening process is a journey. We're human, we're having a human experience, we're spiritual beings having a human experience. And it is a journey. And the whole point of rebirth and spiritual awakenings is to remember who the fuck you are, it's to reclaim your identity, it's to reclaim your authenticity, it's to reclaim the truth of who you are, not the ego self, not the shadow self, not the fake as fuck masks that most people wear, not the 
airy fairy fluffy bullshit of the new age spiritual community that will tell you it's oh it's all love and light fuck that it's it's painful to go through a rebirth it is painful to go through an awakening it is painful to reveal a layer of yourself that you didn't know existed before that's why it's called a rebirth for anyone who's given birth you know how fucking painful birth is and rebirth is the thing about rebirth is it's about accessing that dark energy, dark not being evil, but dark as in being untapped, raw, potent power, potent energy. It's the unknown. And that's why it can be so scary if you're not used to rebirth, if you're not used to spiritual awakenings. It can be very scary because you're being guided to have faith in the unknown, you're being guided to let go of the identity that you have clung on to for so fucking long, but it doesn't serve you, it is an outdated, stagnant, maybe toxic identity that no longer serves you and has never served you, and the whole point of a rebirth is to activate that transformation into a higher version of you. It is part of the spiritual awakening process. And as as I've already said, you know, anyone who's followed like spiritual communities, I I actually am I am deeply spiritual, but I cannot stand spiritual communities because I find it very, very fucking fake. I find most people in the spiritual communities quite fake. They're all wearing a mask, they're all talking out their ass from their ego. And not everyone, but like the people I've seen. Um, and most of it is just surface level fluff that doesn't actually get you anywhere. I work in the darkness. I work in the shittiest fucking parts of the human psyche, in the shittiest shittiest parts of the subconscious in the darkest aspects of the human psyche Scorpio rising here so I love my Scorpio energy I I work in the darkness like the darkness is my playground because I know how to activate the darkness into the light I know how to alchemize darkness into light I am a guide through the darkness, a shamanic guide through the darkness. I'm the one who throws the fucking rope down to you when you when you're in the darkest depths of your your psyche of yourself, not knowing how you're going to get out, not knowing how to find the way out, feeling really lost and confused and kind of sometimes in a, in a pit of despair. I'm the one who throws a rope down and shows you the secret door as to how to find the way out, because I understand the darkness. Not in the way that some people in the spiritual community would talk about, be like, oh, darkness is this, or darkness is bad, or whatever. Oh, we just need to be love and light. Oh, fuck all that with the love and light bullshit. The darkness is where the power is. The darkness is where the truth is. The darkness is where your greatest, greatest self lies is in the darkness that your greatest truth your greatest potency your greatest potential and the untapped gold that is you is found within the the darkest shittiest murkiest aspects of your psyche the parts that have been the shadow it's the shadow I'm like the fucking shadow queen over here I understand the shadow in ways that others don't and when you're going through a rebirth or a spiritual awakening process, what you're doing is you're activating and triggering the shadow to come to the surface. 
and that can bring up so much shit for you because the shadow is 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 the parts of ourselves that we've hidden away from that we carry shame around or fear or we've 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 outcast it to the side there's something there but usually it's like a subconscious unconscious energy and I work with the multidimensional shadow so multidimensional shadow from other lifetimes but the shadow is the part that has been hidden away outcast shunned rejected something that you deny within yourself it is darkness and the shadow is asking to be seen within the light and that's the whole point of a rebirth and a spiritual awakening is to trigger and activate that shadow energy that dark energy I'm seeing in my mind a um, a plant pot with soil and a um and, and and bulbs and seeds and you're kind of shaking it to to bring the seeds up to the surface. That's what you're doing. Anything that's hidden underneath has to come up. And that's a really fucking scary process if you're not used to it. It's really scary. Because especially if you've not been through a rebirth before or if you're you've been in one for a while now and you're kind of like getting bored of it like when the fuck is this shit gonna gonna end like I can rebirth myself within a couple of days a few weeks maybe a few months it just depends but I don't stay in the darkness of the shit or anything like that I know what's going on and I know how to pull myself out of it because I know what the other side is like an even greater layer of my power that is just waiting to be claimed and the thing with rebirth is it is about reclaiming an aspect of your forgotten identity it's an it's about reclaiming a part of your divinity that has been forgotten or cast away or hidden or anything like that because let's face it we live in a 3d society a 3d realm that is just focused on fake and false like this fake people fake food fake information if you hear a noise in my background it's my cat going a little bit bit mental at the moment I've only just let her in but she just runs around and decides that she wants to go out again so she'll have to wait um and we live in this yeah, very fake world, a very false world where it's all inverted, where those who can lie the most seem to get to the top of a tree. Like those in power in like politics or places like that are probably like the most shittiest corrupt people in the world, but the good people of the world don't even seem to get a say in things or where people who, do you know what I mean? I can go, I go on all sorts of many tangents about how fake this world is. Um, but the thing with a rebirth and spiritual awakening is that you're actually stripping that layer off of the false self, the false identity, the one that's kept you safe until now because, I mean, I see the mask on people. I see through people. I'm a seer. I see through people. I see directly through to your soul, which is why people can often become so uncomfortable around me because I see through you. I look directly through you. I look beyond the words you're saying to me or the actions you're using. I read your energy. I read your intention. I read your soul. So I know when people are wearing masks around me and I know how to pull that mask off. And that's the whole point of rebirth is to take that mask away, is to reveal a new layer of yourself, which is really fucking scary because you're suddenly being faced with a version of yourself that maybe you knew existed, but you didn't quite think you were able to experience for yourself that freedom that you want that truth that authenticity 
or maybe you didn't know it existed and it's quite scary to suddenly be vulnerable because when anything is rebirthed you know it's you know when a baby is born it's in its most vulnerable state and that's the whole point of the rebirth is that you're suddenly really vulnerable because you you have this fresh new energy you no longer have the mask that you were wearing before, that you didn't even realize you were wearing. That's the thing. Most people don't realize that they're wearing a mask until they come around me and I point the mask out to them. But it's a real vulnerable state to be in. Because suddenly, suddenly you're faced with looking around at the world and being like, I don't connect with these people anymore. This job or career or business or whatever it is doesn't resonate with me anymore I can't get on with these friends we used to get on and now I'm just like it's like we're completely different people or I don't even know who my family are because we're just like completely different people or your body might start rejecting certain foods or have sensitivities for things as you raise your frequency. You become more sensitive to to fake. Um, <laughs> for me, I mean, I'm very sensitive anyway, but um, like I, 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 I cannot be around fake people. It literally, it's torture for me to be around fake people because I'm like, do you not see the fucking mask that you're wearing and how fake you're being? And obviously we don't. But I cannot stand anything fake, any fake food, any processed food, um, fake news, and obviously all the propaganda, which is why I don't listen to news, but you know, all the propaganda that's out there, all the politicians with their fake as fuck propaganda and shit. Um systems, industries, anything that is rooted in a a state of disempowerment. I cannot stand to be around. I cannot stand to be around fake people, um, lies, illusion, anyone who refuses to see the lies that they're living or refuses to see the illusion in their life, I can't stand to be around. It literally irritates me because I'm on such a high vibrational level, a higher frequency level, higher frequency consciousness that anything that is not aligned just cannot be in my energy. It can't. And that can be a really scary place to be in. I'm, I, you know, it doesn't affect me anymore because I've been through so many rebirths. But if, it, if you're not used to rebirths you're or you've been in one for a while it can be a very scary place to be because you're being asked to release anything from your energy that just does not align with you and that can be family it can be friends it can be a lover a relationship it can be a job a career it can be a mindset a belief it could be your religious beliefs or your culture could even be your fucking country that you live in. It could be the way you eat, the way you exercise, the any the way you show up in the world, the way you make money, the way you um your health, anything. And that can be really scary because suddenly you find yourself vulnerable because you're you're being asked to let go of things that until now have kind of kept you safe. You've been in that comfort, that comfort bubble of, oh yeah, everything's cool, everything's cool, my life is fine, whatever. Until you suddenly wake up one day and like, actually I don't enjoy who I am. I don't feel free in who I am. I don't feel free with um, my career, my job, my business, how I make money. I don't feel free in my body. I don't feel free in my mind. I don't feel good around these people anymore when I used to. These habits that I have just don't work for me anymore. And that's really scary 
because you've been asked to let go of something that has been part of your identity until now that you didn't realize is actually hindering your growth and hindering your spiritual growth. And that is really scary, a scary place to be in. I get it. But the thing is, though, in order to move through the rebirth, you have to make space for this new identity to be born because there's a higher frequency version of you that wants to come through. And that higher frequency version of you cannot and will not tolerate anything that is misaligned for it whether that is people, relationships, family, friends, career, beliefs, religious beliefs, culture, um, habits, anything like that, anything that is misaligned, anything that is too attached to your old version that you are outgrowing or that you are being asked to outgrow, needs to leave and that can be really fucking scary because (coughs) excuse me because you suddenly find yourself on on a raft in the middle of a fucking ocean without without an oar without a paddle you're like where's the land how 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 do I get back and I laugh because I go through so many rebirths it's just my natural state of being is to rebirth again and again and again it's a gift of mine it's a gift it's a gift that I share with my clients because I understand the rebirth process I understand how to pull people through the rebirth process how to guide people out of the darkness and into the light how to alchemize darkness into light. I'm an alchemist. How to alchemize pain into power, illusion into truth, darkness into light. It's my fucking gift. And the rebirth process is a very, very, very powerful spiritual transformation. And it's one that requires you to leave behind anything that is not aligned with this higher frequency self that is asking to be birthed through you. Anything, a shitty pattern that you have, a a shitty habit, a behavior, limiting beliefs, said people, relationships, friends, family, certain foods, um, your belief system of what you grew up in, if you grew up in religion or a particular culture, systems, anything, you have to let it go. You have to let it go. Because here's the caveat. The longer you hold on to whatever is no longer aligned for your higher frequency self, however long you hold on to it and hold on to it with a death grip because you are too scared to let it go, the more painful your life is. That's just part of it. The longer you hold on to that version of you that is that you're trying to shed, that version of you, that skin that you're trying to, to shed from yourself, the longer you hold on to it, the more painful your life is. Because you're outgrowing something that has become too constricting for you, just like a snake. A snake is a perfect example of rebirth. A snake sheds its skin. When it grows, the skin becomes too tight, too constrictive. So it's the snake rubs its 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 body against the floor to 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 generate friction that then removes the skin from it. It's the friction in your life that is created from the conflict inside of you holding on to the identity that you've outgrown. Your higher self knows you've outgrown it. Obviously, that's why you're going through the rebirth. 
but your ego is like I'm fucking comfortable with it so I'm just like gonna stay here but your higher self is like no no let it go let it go and that's the caveat is the longer you hold on to that old identity the more painful your life will be if you imagine with a snake if the snake is unable to remove that skin as the snake grows and the skin becomes tighter and tighter if it does not create that friction to remove the skin it's going to become tighter and tighter probably end up dying or something I, I don't know not being able to breathe so it becomes so tight it wouldn't be able to move and that's the whole point of rebirthing yourself is to release that old identity to release that version of you that has become too tight on you has become too restrictive for you because there is a freedom on the other side that is calling to you it is calling out to you when you let go of that old identity and that requires you to just let go of everything that no longer serves you, everything that is misaligned for you, everything that is stagnant in your energy, anything that is toxic, anything that is false, anything or anyone. You know, I don't understand why people hold why people stay in a relationship that they've outgrown. I don't understand why people keep friends who they no longer get along with or tolerate toxic shit from family members who should know better or stay in a job that makes you fucking miserable. I don't get it because there's absolutely no reason to do that unless you, you're you a glutton for, for pain and you like being in that painful kind of situation. I don't get it. Or why, you know, when people stay in a a toxic pattern of self-destructive behavior, if you recognize that it's self-destructive, then why fucking do it? Unless you just like the pain of being in a self-destructive relationship with yourself. But that's the whole point of rebirth is to let go of identities, to let go of the old, to create the space and the freedom for the new version to come through, which feels freer. It feels liberating. It feels expansive. Because it is. You imagine the caterpillar after, and I use a lot of um, imagery in, when I'm talking because you know it helps to convey the, mes- the message, obviously, like I see the images in my mind anyway. But the caterpillar, the caterpillar goes into the um, the chrysalis and transforms itself into the butterfly in a very tight and cramped space. It grows its wings until eventually it, it cracks open the chrysalis, crawls out the chrysalis and flies away. It's free, it's liberated, it's expansive because it had to remove itself from that chrysalis that was tight and dark and restrictive no room for freedom until it broke free and that's what a rebirth calls of you is 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 to is to free yourself is a version of you that is waiting to come through right now. There's a higher frequency version of you that is waiting to come through. And it it requires a space to be born through you, which means releasing that old identity, releasing those restrictions in your life, re- releasing anything that is false, illusionary, fake, anything. That is not the truth of who you truly fucking are, your divine self, your authentic self. It's it's an invitation to remember who the fuck you are and reclaim that power. That's the whole point of a rebirth and it is scary. But on the other side of a rebirth, 
is the freedom you've been longing for, the expansion you've been longing for, the liberation that you've been longing for, to feel free within yourself and expansive and and lighter. Because when you've released the old identity, when you've released that heavier energy, you feel lighter. You feel lighter. Because you're raising your frequency, you're raising your vibration, you're raising yourself into a higher and higher and higher frequency, which can't hold on to darker, denser energies, just can't. Like, I'm at a point now where I'm so sensitive to most foods because anything that is processed, like, my body can't tolerate. And yeah, I have Neptune on my ascendant, so Neptune on the ascendant, you know, makes me more sensitive anyway. It's why I can read energy so well. Um, but certain foods now I can't even tolerate. You know, see, you know when I started my spiritual awakening, what, six, seven years ago, um, I could, but now with certain things I can't tolerate, certain people I can't tolerate, certain um, sounds I can't even tolerate. It's, it's, really, it's really quite crazy, actually. Um, because I'm on such a higher frequency now. And as I continue to, to rise and rise and rise and rise and rise, because that's a process that I've been rebirthing myself through. So I'm going to leave it there. I hope this has given somebody some kind of guidance or some kind of like sense of, thank you, you know, I, I feel seen and feel heard because it is really scary to be in a rebirth process. It is really scary to go through an awakening process. Um, it makes you very vulnerable because you've been asked to see a side of you that you didn't know existed before. And that's really quite scary. It's empowering, but it's very scary at the same time. So I hope this has given somebody some kind of clarity or some kind of guidance or anything like that. I am going to be back with more podcasts. Yeah, you know, I've just literally rebirthed myself through. It's probably been like one of my most powerful rebirths to date, um, which is very fucking cool. As I said, I love the rebirth process. It's one of my gifts. So it's been a very, very empowering process. I've just taken myself through and I feel ready to be back with speaking and writing and connecting again um, on on social media. So I will leave it there. Thank you so much for listening and I will chat to you on the next episode.